Hi everyone and welcome back to another Wi-Fi Sheep Tech video with me Tom. Now today I thought it might be a good opportunity to do a code review and show you some of the latest goings on with my NanoGangs 8-bit project that many of you that follow the channel will know about. Um, but before that I have an announcement. If you happen to be in the UK and are around the Shrewsbury Central Shropshire area of England on the evening of October the 10th, 2018, from 7.30pm, then I will be holding the very first Shrewsbury Net Computing Group event. A true meet and greet for all Raspberry Pi and retro computing fans and geeks alike. For full details, terms and conditions, and to book tickets online, go to www.ident-online.co.uk forward slash Shrewsbury dash net. Yeah, so if you happen to be in the area, it would be fantastic to see you. It's completely free. There is generally no catch here. It is free. I know a lot of these YouTuber type events, they charge you, but this one, there's no catch. There's no details being harvested, no sales, no hard push, nothing. It is completely free to come and attend. We're just trying to create a new sort of computer hobbyist club and group in Shropshire. Anyway, with that out of the way, let's get on to the code review. Regulars to the channel will be familiar with Nanogangs, a new 2D platformer game I've been writing for the BBC Micro 8-bit computer just using the basic programming language. The game's most recent build is known as the Wakefield build and was first shown at the 2017 Wakefield Computer Show. Although warmly received by the 8-bit hobbyist community as a whole, work on the project stalled due to some issues with hardware limitations. Not least, trying to make a game on a system such as the Acorn BBC Micro with no native sprite support. However, there is a way around this. If you refer to the user's guide, the back appendix lists a number of customizable text characters that allow a user to plot their own letters or symbols. These symbols can also be used to create movable sprites under BASIC. Imagine a grid, 8 pixels by 8 pixels, and along the top we add a value of 128 and half that in turn until we get 1. Now let's make a character design by plotting pixels in the grid. We now add a corresponding number value to the pixels from the numbers listed above. Now starting from the top row we add the numbers contained within the pixels to create a new value. This value is then added to a VDU23 statement in BASIC followed by the character's ASCII ID number, in this case 232 and then the first of our custom values, which for the first line is 60. We repeat this adding process until we've made up all eight lines of the new sprite character. Each 8x8 pixel character can only hold one colour value if plotted as a graphic to the screen, so multiple 8x8 character tiles have to be used to make up a full colour sprite. This is all well and good, but the more plotting required, the slower the computer becomes, and in this case missing whole frames as it can't redraw fast enough. In addition, all this information needs to be stored on a disk, which for the BBC Micro requires the use of DFS or disk filing system, which creates its own issues. So using DFS, it doesn't even matter what kind of disk format you use, it can only ever hold 200k on a single sided image. Now for Nanogangs, that was proving a problem. Let me demonstrate by loading off a DFS formatted floppy disk image using the Wakefield build. The opening intro text uses about 3k of space. Then the first logo screen uses 20k, so that brings us up to 23k used. The second screen is another 20k plus the basic source code, so now we're up to about 46k. The menuing system brings the space used to 69k. And finally, we start the first level with approximately 84k of a 200k disk already used up. But as the BBC Micro Model B can only hold up to 32k in RAM at any one time, most of this is used up by the video chip, BASIC and the main operating system, leaving only about 8k available for program code. This means the disk drive is constantly having to shuffle around data, which for these now hourly drives is not the best. It also slows down gameplay. 
Clearly, my early ambitions needed a rethink. Then in late 2017, I saw online footage of a new game for the Commodore VIC-20, written by MG Misfit and published by Rob Hall of The Future Was 8-Bit, called Cheese and Onion. Rob kindly gave me permission to use this game footage taken from his YouTube channel. I was blown away at how good this game was, and the fact it was even possible on a VIC-20, a machine with the same 6502 processor as the BBC Micro, but with less RAM and running at a slower clock speed. Information about Cheese and Onion can be found at www.thefuturewas8bit.com. After seeing Cheese and Onion, it was clear I needed to rethink my project. So using text edit and the Mac build of BBEM, a BBC Micro emulator, I set about rewriting my basic code. Writing on a modern system, code can be copied and pasted straight into the emulator, making retro development much easier. After much paring down, here is the first example of a new Nanogang's build. As you can see it now runs much faster, and has a higher resolution of 220 by 256 pixels, as opposed to the limited 160 by 256 pixels of the Wakefield build. In order to achieve this, the colour palette has been limited to just four colours, and the sprites have been simplified and limited to a single 8 by 8 pixel tiles. One of the biggest questions I've been asked about the Nanogangs project is why I'm simply not writing it in the native 6502 assembler. Well, the reason this is that it would lock me down to the 6502 architecture. So without an emulator or a complete overhaul or rewrite, the program couldn't migrate easily onto newer platforms. One of those platforms is the RISC OS operating system for the Raspberry Pi. So today I'm going to take my tech demo or the newer build of the tech demo, and I'm going to port the code straight into RiskOS to show you exactly what I mean. RiskOS supports BBC Basic natively, so it will run as a native application against the Raspberry Pi's ARM processor. If I wrote in 6502, that simply wouldn't be compatible, and hence it limits what I can do. Let me show you. First, the plain text.txt file containing the source code is copied off my Mac to a PC FAT or FAT32 format USB stick or pen drive. For this demo, I'll use my trusty original Raspberry Pi Model B, attached to a USB hub for mouse and keyboard, and loaded with RISC OS 5 on the bootable SD card inside the Pi. When using RISC OS, it's important to remember it still expects an original Acorn Archimedes free button mouse, even on the Pi version. However, any free button USB mouse should be fine. Even those with a center clickable scroll wheel to act as a middle button will also work. So this is RISC-OS Pi or RISC-OS 5 for the Raspberry Pi. Uh, this is a slightly older build, but it's the, the new builds look relatively the same. Um, this is my kind of play OS, if you like. So I've sort of pulled this system apart. Anyway, in order to do the port for the code, the first thing we're going to do is click on the SD card, which acts a bit like your C drive um, on a PC. And you see lots and lots of folders. I'm just going to create a new one. So I'll find a bit of space. This is where you need your middle click or your scroll wheel click. And we'll go new directory. And without clicking anything, we need to type what the name's going to be. So we'll say Nano gangs, like so. Oops, I missed the G out. Nano gangs, like so. And we click OK. And it will create a new folder called Nano gangs, which we can open. We can then close the um, file behind. So there's then an empty folder space on the desktop. So taking our fat format USB stick. Just going to plug that in, and you can now see down here it's actually mounted on drive zero. And there's all sorts of files it won't like or understand here. And what we're looking for is our text file setup. So, look, there we are, setup text. So we can click 
and drag into our folder and it copies. We'll close our USB stick, middle click and we can dismount the stick from the system and I've just removed the stick from the pie like so. Okay, so we now have our file set up txt and you'll notice that it, instead of being a dot txt it's a slash. RiscOS swaps dots and slashes around so a file directory for example will be like my documents dot something dot stuff dot whatever slash txt um, so you've got to remember that with this operating system so if we double click this file you see it opens up in a program called strong ed and it's reading it as text so we can then use the scroll wheel scroll up and down like so it won't actually execute as basic at the moment However, if I middle click with the scroll wheel here, change mode, select basic, and then if I hit the little running man icon, the code will actually execute. As you can see, it does sort of work, but it runs so fast that the character is sporadically jumping around and moving a million miles a minute and you can also see the colors are way way off to put it lightly there's also a few other graphical glitches but fundamentally the source code actually does work and it is straight off of bbc micro and it will actually run straight on a raspberry pi with risk os um just before i go i want to say i've been really um encouraged by the comments uh, by the wonderful community that are following me on YouTube, especially those who have been able to help out who are starting their own coding and have had a few questions. I know there's been a lot of interest with the Ichigo Jam Basic that I did in the previous video. Um, I'm just, you know, this is not a big numbers channel. I'm not going after millions of subscribers. I'm not looking for hundreds of thousands of views. This project is about me just showing what I'm interested in and if I can help out other people on the way, the more the merrier. Okay, well, don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks once again for joining me, and I'll see you real soon, right here on Wi-Fi Sheep. Until next time, bye for now.